Interim Associate Superintendent for Curriculum Instruction. Joe Newberry, Associate Superintendent for Human Resources, Legal and Labor Affairs. And we have Ms. Paulette Anderson at the end of the table with our video and everything else that she does for us. As well as for our audio, <coughs> we have Mr. Peter Putman and Amanda is doing audio, um, excuse me, is doing audio and Peter is doing video. Thank you so much. This meeting is a meeting of the Southfield Board of Education in public for the purposes of conducting the school district's business and is not to be considered a public community meeting. There is time for public participation during the meeting as indicated in item 8. Special presentation. Mr. John M. Thompson comes to the podium, Director of Envirocene Building and Maintenance Services is here to donate funds to the Southfield Public Schools Foundation. I'll say that again. To the Southfield Public Schools Foundation. The mission of the foundation is to collect and administer resources exclusively for the purposes of supporting and enriching learning opportunities for students and staff of the Southfield Public School District. More will be forthcoming in regard to the Southfield Foundation. Dr. Wood, Mr. Williams, board, thank you for allowing us to come today to present this check to you. We believe in education. Um, we, we love to clean the buildings. We understand that the cleaning of buildings also represents uh, the ability for kids to learn in a good environment. And uh, there's lots of statistics out there that say uh, and show that a clean building helps with uh, with that process. So we like being a part of that. But we're more than that. We believe in education. I've been involved in school and education for over 40 years. Um, even taught a few years, uh, much to my students' dismay. Uh, and uh, but I, I found my place uh, on the operational side, helping with uh, those things around uh, the educational process. And so we want to donate this money to you for your educational process because we know it's hard these days in, in, in the educational arena with the funding cuts and the way things are going on the state level. And I know that you do a lot with your students. So we would like to present a check for $2,000 to you, Dr. Woods, to start that process. And I'd like our vice president for the Southfield that Foundation to pick up. Oh, that'd be even better. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so, fantastic. And uh, we, we put no strings to this. You use it in any way you feel necessary for that to be done uh, in terms of education. We know you know how to spend the money for education better than we did. Mm -hmm. so thank you so much. Oh, that would be so wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. And that check is in the amount of uh, $2,000. Thank you. 
you to share some information. Good evening, everyone. Um, for those of you that don't know, I brought with me one of our new athletic event coordinators, Mr. Gary Winston. Um, Mr. Winston housed at Southfield High School. And Mr. Brent Thomas, um, who's not here yet, is housed at Southfield Laker High School. He is, um, Mr. Thomas is actually supervising our middle school athletic activities for the evening. So, very quickly, just want to highlight a um, few things going on in our athletic department. But before I begin, um, I would be remiss if I didn't offer condolences to the family um, of our head football coach, Keith Stevens, at South Atlanta High School, who recently lost his battle with cancer. So uh, we offer that to his family and community. Obviously, our student athletes uh, are taking it pretty hard. So um, we offer our condolences and ask that you, you know, where possible, wrap your arms around them. So thank you. Um, <coughs> first area is um, expansion of programs this year. We were able to return freshman volleyball to each high school, so an additional uh, 40 student athletes, young ladies in particular, obviously a big passion of mine, um, back on the court. Uh, we were also able to return, uh, with the support of our finance department, JB Cheer, to Southfield Later High School, an additional 20 to 22 girls on the court, active and involved. Uh, we also expanded our cheer program at Southfield High School um, to include a competitive cheer team, for the first, it's been quite a few years since we've had a competitive team at Southfield High School, uh, with hopes of expanding to competitive cheer at Southfield Lake Brook for 2016. I uh, want to make sure that in the student athlete process, we always keep at the forefront that students are first. We have currently 26 student athletes across our two high schools with um, collegiate scholarship offers on the table, including 20 football players and one volleyball player from Southfield High School that signed their national letters of intent last <laughs> Wednesday, February 4th, representing over $2 million in full of, um, scholarships for student athletes at our high school. We will have another uh, letter of intent signing day in April um, where we have several uh, basketball and baseball players who will be um, signing their letters. Um, both girls' basketball teams at our high schools have combined GPAs of 3.4 or higher. And our football team at Southfield High School um, was uh, is going to be named um, Academic All-State Team in the near future for, um, again, a combined GPA of over 3.3. Uh, we are champs also on the field. Our OAA championships, Southfield High School football, Southfield High School wrestling, uh, both won OAA championships. And our Southfield High Cheer team in their first uh, inaugural season, played third place in the OAA, so they did a fabulous job. Um, and we also have district and regional championships in football at South Carolina. Uh, marketing, getting our name out there, which our student athletes, we always encourage them to be ambassadors of our programs and our schools. We are partnering with Channel 15, who has offered free of charge to film, edit, and air select games of the week um, on Channel 15. Um, they've been at Several games at both high schools. Um, they recently viewed, uh, recently filmed the wrestling championships, and they also will be with us this Saturday to film and then air our middle school basketball championship. Uh, we are the site for Oakland County Wrestling Tournament, the largest wrestling tournament in the country. We are host to the MHSAA Wrestling Team District. We are also the site for MHSAA Volleyball District, and we will be hosting the MHSAA Regional Tournament for Girls and Boys Basketball as well as district tournaments for softball and baseball. And I brag on that because of all the schools in the state of Michigan, they keep coming back to us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, our, pro our athletic programs have been featured in various publications, including the most recent, uh, Sports Illustrated. So if you pick up the Sports Illustrated, there's mentions of our football programs. I um, also wanted to share a little bit about our middle school sports. We currently have over 400 students participating in our middle school basketball and cheerleading program. <coughs> we require them to be good citizens, good students, and good athletes. To be eligible, they have no fours or fives in citizenship. They cannot be failing any core academic <coughs> subject area, and they are subject to weekly progress reports and evaluation even as middle school students. So when we say 400 students, we're not just saying 400 kids. We're saying 400 student athletes that are all doing what they're supposed to do. So uh, we're very proud of that. And we want to invite everyone this Saturday at Southfield High School to our middle school basketball and cheerleading competition. Um, 
Saturday beginning at 9 o'clock, we have games all day until 2 o'clock, as well as our all-school combined cheer performance. So, thank you.
parents, and a volunteer engineer. Students created a virtual STEM city, made a model of it using recycled products, and presented it in front of a panel of judges. As a result, three UPREP teams were recognized for their hard work. Next, two UHSA seniors participated in Southfield High's National Signing Day ceremony on February 4th. Marcus Grimes will be attending Ohio University, <coughs> and Keith Newberry will be attending Lake Erie College, both under football commitments. Congrats, guys. UHSA and UPREP offers biannual travel experiences for our students. However, we will now be getting <coughs> them available every year. Next year, we will be traveling to London, and in 2017, we will travel to Beijing. Yesterday, the Green Club completed their Jeans for Teens drive, which is sponsored by Air Apostle. The jeans <coughs> will be delivered to a local Air Apostle and delivered, and they will deliver them to Metro Detroit homeless shelters. Next, this Friday will be the Class of 2015's annual Student versus Student Game where students from different grade levels go head to head. This week, NHS is hosting a random act of kindness week. Students can send warm fuzzies to their friends, and NHS members are giving out nice speech, nice gestures, such as free hugs and compliments. Also, NHS posts nice compliments on everyone's lockers and will be raffling off a random goodie basket to a lucky person. Upcoming at the U, on February 25th, University SUCO will host their first MASC MAHS regional conference, where 300 student council members from schools in the region come together and share what they've done at their school. This year, the theme is Lion King. Thanks for listening to the latest news at the U, and have a good day.
is Dior Johnson and Charles Harris were chosen to play the second annual Border Classic. This is an all-star football game that will be held at Wayne State in June and pit Ohio and Michigan's best prep players against each other. Thank you so much for giving me this time to showcase a few of the great things happening at SHS or Blue Jay Store. Stand out and go to the
I'd like to just say that each month when I look at this artwork in our boardroom here at JWV, I'm always so moved and inspired with the desire to create the same artwork. I want to join our students in the classrooms and learn from the teacher myself. I want the teacher to extract from me my hidden gift. <laughs> we have so many wonderful teachers that make a difference, and I'm so encouraged with the artwork that our teachers uh, share with our students and the creativity that our children display. I'd like to have Julie Wolf, the art teacher from Vandenberg, <coughs> come to our podium and uh, just to share a little bit about this wonderful display of artwork uh, here <coughs> in our board room. I'm done complimenting them because the ones for them I wouldn't be here. They can go and point to their art. Um, so <laughs> So these are just some of my students that created this beautiful display of art and without them I wouldn't be here and they're all just amazing. Um, they are learning so much all the time and they're just so cooperative and wonderful and I'm really proud to be a Southfield Public School Vandenberg art teacher and yeah they they make me proud every day. Absolutely. So yeah I appreciate the team here. Thank you. Yeah. But okay, go and see any of your artwork and maybe we can get some pictures. Can you have the names? Can you read the names? Okay, wait, come back, come back, come back. Sorry, I'm not there. Just say your name and then you can read the names. And show us your artwork. My name is Bria and I'm in fourth grade. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, show them what show you Show us your artwork. recommendations to the Board of Education 
at our March or April Board of Education meeting. And the only reason the board I indicated April this evening is because they have a lot of work that they're working through and they may need one more meeting. Um, but their, their, their charge is to look at how we can continually contain costs and continually improve and maintain and accelerate our programming. I am extremely impressed with this group of citizens and they are representing our community in a very stellar way uh, to support the continued legacy of excellence here in Southfield Schools. And I am very pleased, I'm very pleased about a lot, <laughs> but I, I got goosebumps uh, uh, yesterday because uh, we, uh, well, let me start and just say I'm very pleased that I'm born again for just this legacy of strong leadership. But uh, the last few days, um, uh, our board president and our trustee, Robinson, who is our board secretary, company of a team from Southville to Chicago for our Midwestern College Board conference. And during this time when we were together, we celebrated one of our staff members who recently, very recently, we'll make some formal announcements too, uh, and she's not even here tonight because she is still being trained, but was elected um, from all over the Midwestern, um, the Midwestern region to the College Board for a three-year term. And so she'll be representing, and that is Marcia Williams, our district very well. That was the second piece that gave me goosebumps. Uh, what that gave me goosebumps? This year, it surprised me that we met with uh, the vice president for college board. We had a special meeting for Southfield uh, because they wanted to publicly acknowledge our partnership and to formalize, formalize a partnership as a leading district in Michigan and across this country. And, uh, and what that means is that they're going to sign off with the president, sign off with our board president, to publicly recognize that we are a district that's kept taking the lead and leading forward and making differences for our children, and that provides us with events, support, opportunities that other districts should want. And so we're just grateful for College Board recognizing us and moving us forward with them. The last thing that I want to share at this moment um, that I'm so um, equally pleased about is six years ago, and many of our board members were still with us, um, we started our AP prep program, which again connects to the legacy of College Board. Um, College Board is an organization with a goal of providing opportunities for our children to have secondary uh, education beyond high school. And not only just to get accepted into college and post-secondary education opportunities, <coughs> but to get through and to be successful with it. And we, uh, we all know in our district, we publicize it on the uh, marquee in front of Buffy that college starts before you get to high school, preparing for college, I should say. And so our AP prep uh, program provides our children at each of our elementary and K-8 buildings the opportunity uh, to be selected, to be engaged in some above and enhanced learning <coughs> opportunities. And I'd like for Mrs. Alma Dean to come to the podium. Is she here? Oh, right here, <laughs> And I would like for the teachers that share a day together with our AP prep students on our district day come to the podium because I'm so very proud of what I saw and what our children experienced. Your dedication, your commitment, your ability to give above and beyond and to make the children just gleam with pride to be a student here in South Hill Public Schools. These are wonderful teachers. Tracy, Angela, Raina, Michelle, Tori, Talea, Kimberly, Jennifer, Juantonia, Corn, Mary, I thank you. <laughs> and, um, and so we have, this is just a subset. We have so many teachers that are doing fabulous work. And I may not be able to give you everything, but I want you to know how much you're cared about, how much you're valued, and how much we want to help support you move forward, helping our children to be their very best. 
And so Mrs. Dean is going to talk a little bit more, and I'm going to close my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Um, my name is Alma Dean, and I'm the director of uh, K-8 Education here in Southville Public Schools. I have the pleasure of also uh, being the coordinator for the AP Prep program. And as Dr. Wood indicated, it's an opportunity for us to help our children to advance their learning opportunities. We're fortunate that we have a superintendent who has the vision and the know-it-all to realize that just because you're in the third grade, doesn't mean you're not ready for a fourth grade learning experience. And she has charged us with the uh, task of bringing that to fruition, and we're very pleased to have done so. And on uh, last January 27th and 28th, we held a two-day event at Eisenhower. We had over 200 AP prep students to come and join us in those two days. And these lovely educators you see standing behind you, they, they, got, they, they got down. They had opportunities to help, help children learn some challenging, interesting, engaging activities and, and uh, opportunities. It was so it was so rich and full. At the end of each day, the children didn't want to go home. I thought that was the cutest part. And when you have children to say that they're not ready to leave, you got them. So I'll give each of these ladies an opportunity to come up and speak and just share um, what that day, what those days meant to them. Hello everyone, um, my name is Tori Ballard and I teach fourth grade at McIntyre Elementary School. Um, I really enjoy the AP day with the students in our district. I have a passion for teaching science mm -hmm. and I was given the opportunity to be able to really just spend a day with the kids from all over the district and provide opportunities for them to engage <laughs> in various science experiments. It was a fun day for them, and it was definitely a fun and rewarding day for me as well. Thank you. Hello, everyone. I'm Keisha Hill. I'm a math host for the K-5 teachers. Um, it was phenomenal for me because I, I miss being in the classroom, watching the kids' eyes light up and, and see all the learning take place. I taught a geometry lesson to, I think, third and fourth grade, and I, two cool things. Okay, so one, I got about three or four cards from the kids, and the cutest one says, um, you rock and you love me even when I make mistakes. Wow. And that was just awesome. Like, I only got to spend about an hour or so with them, but in that time, they felt loved and appreciated, and their learning was expanded. And, I mean, that was just awesome. And then the second thing is, is I started to visit the different schools, and I go into the teacher's classroom after, Big on their eyes go like, that was my teacher! <laughs> <laughs> so I get to see kids from all over the district, and it's just amazing to see how such small bodies can learn such huge concepts. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Talia Williams Hunter, the ELA Professional Development Facilitator. And this was truly an awesome experience for me to have the opportunity to teach a writing lesson to these eager fifth and sixth uh, graders. And they loved, what I did was I did a lesson on voice, having the students incorporate voice into their writing. And they were so into it, and their learning experience was just fabulous. They had fun, as Ms. Dean said, they didn't want to leave. And the crazy part is, at the end of it, I wasn't ready to go. They had to flash me down like the play is over. We were having so much fun. So I'm just truly appreciative for the opportunity. Good evening. I'm Rania Katori. I'm third grade at McIntyre Elementary, and I do have to say, as much as I love to talk and teach, my biggest fright is to present <laughs> to adults. <laughs> <laughs> Bear with me. So my lesson was with first and second grade. Mind you, I'm always an upper elementary teacher, and I've actually been teaching third grade for three years. So teaching downtown for the first and second graders was awesome. They actually were, ab they were able to do a uh, collage with different, uh, a variety of magazines. <coughs> they were able to identify nouns, but they were supposed to pick their nouns from the pictures, and they were able to categorize them by person, place, or thing. 
It was really cool, and we also first grade, right? Yeah, first and second, yeah. <laughs> but the best part was they were able. We did like a little. I had to bring it down a little bit, where we did like a little circle, like a family circle. So they were able to introduce themselves first and uh, share with me what their favorite, who their favorite person was what their favorite place was, and what their favorite thing to do was. Mm -hmm. So before they even started, they already knew what the lesson was about. So I really enjoyed it. It was mm -hmm. a great experience. Thank you and have a great night. Good evening. My name is Michelle Harden. I teach this grade at Stevenson Elementary. And I had just an awesome day with the students um, at the AP Prep Program. We wrote code, and uh, first they had to program themselves so that they could move uh, cups from one area to another, and the only thing that they could use were arrows pointing up, down, uh, to the left, or to the right, and they understood exactly what that meant. We'd have one student leave the room, uh, the other students would get together, and they would come up with lines of code, and when the, other, when the student came back into the room, he had to read the code and actually follow the process and move the cups to put them in the position that they were supposed to be in. After that, we actually went to code.org and the students were programming uh, little um, angry birds on, yeah, <laughs> on the screen <laughs> and the angry birds had to get the pig. And so they had to program the angry bird to go up and down, left and right, and they had to really pay attention, look really closely at the grid so that they would know which way to move the angry bird. So it gives them an idea of what computer programming will be like in the future. And they had a wonderful time, and I did too. It was great. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Angela Gloucester. I'm an ELA PD facilitator, and I have to agree with Keisha. It was absolutely fun to be back in the classroom. I did a lesson with first and second grade students, and I did a writing lesson with them. And um, we read a story called Dogzilla, and Dogzilla is a story about a colossal dog who destroyed the city. So uh, the purpose of the lesson was for them to learn how to retell the story using word choice. So I did something called a RAS, and a RAS is when you do a writing lesson based on a role, an audience, a format, and a topic. And I divided the kids into groups. I had two groups. One group did a skit of the story Godzilla. So they actually destroyed the city. If you walked in my room, you had chairs knocked over. You know, you had people running around screaming. And another group uh, did a song. And so they presented to each other, and then when, when they were done, they were actually able to write and retell the story and the excitement on the kids' faces. Afterwards, like Keisha also said, when I walked into some of the schools, the kids were like, oh, there's my teacher, there's my teacher. It was very rewarding. And I also ran into another teacher who came to escort her class to the event. And she said, oh, my goodness, I think the district needs to do this you know, more than once a year because the kids were so engaged. They were um, collaborating with kids from other schools. They made friends right away. Mm -hmm. And it was amazing watching a fourth grader from Thompson collaborate with a fourth grader from Vandenberg. You would have thought they were friends forever. Mm -hmm. So it was just a wonderful experience, and thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Good evening. I'm Mary Ann Van Ermen. I'm a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade social studies teacher at Burden K-8 in the University Middle School. And I have to agree with all the lovely places behind me that it was a really beneficial and enrichment day for the teachers, staff, and students. One of my students said, why don't we do this more often? And I said, you're right, we should do this more often. Um, I taught social studies, they were geographers, we did statistics. Um, we went on the internet and they found statistics that were meaningful and fun for them. And then we graphed them and we did surveys with each other. And it was it was just a really worthwhile day um, to see the kids really enjoying, not that they don't enjoy it, but this was a new environment, new surroundings, and they met lots of new people. I want to thank you so much and I want to thank all of you so very much because the AP Prep District Days is something that we will continue, and we've done it before in the past. We had a two-year lapse where we did not have them, but it is something that to see all of these kids from across all of our schools come together is truly tremendous. And
And one of the things that we also wish to continue is to have our AP students to come and partake in the experience with our children because little ones look up to our older students and they will also learn and enhance so much. I'm just so grateful for each and every one of you and I thank you and I know that the board, do you have any mm -hmm. questions or? As I said before, we have a team that's young ladies and girls and men out there as well. We support you 110%, so no matter what you hear, we support you 110%. Dr. Willis say we wish you, we can give you the world, we can only give you so much and as well as you well know. But we appreciate what you do, we, that the time that you invest, the amount of energy you put in, and training our leaders for the future is the most important. And again, thank you so much. If you guys will indulge us for just one one more minute, we have a quick video of uh, pictures that we'd like to share with you.
You'll notice that no one gave us an F and only nine people gave a lower grade um, lower than a C. So when we asked why were these grades given, the top answer was good teachers. Now have we just seen some great teachers? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this was Absolutely. the top. And then uh, the second answer, academic programs and good staff. If you notice the gap between good teachers and academic programs, that's a little steep for us. We want to close that gap. This tells us we need to do more to advertise our programs. And our recent Citizens Council also attested to the fact that they wanted to see more advertising of our programs. And then good staff. So the community really appreciates our, our staff. So I want to uh, just share a few things with you very quickly that aren't on the slide. When we're talking about the opt-out parents, we read the following statement to them, and this is how they responded. I believe Southfield Schools offers a quality curriculum. These are parents who are not in our school district. 63% agreed. When people I know talk about the district, it is usually positive. 61% of parents not in our district agree. I believe Southfield Schools is headed in the right direction. 55% agree. So it leads us to a question. We want all these people in our district. So let's look at just a few <coughs> quick points. We're still studying this. We're going to do focus groups to follow up. But uh, the top reason why people gave Southfield Public Schools a great rating but were not in our district, for, and these are parents, so these are, these are not your um, senior citizens, your uh, community influencers who maybe had children who went through the district. This is strictly parents. Uh, the top reason was uh, parents said that they moved to Southfield and they kept their child in the previous school. That was 45%. So this indicates to us that where they start school, that's where they're going to stay. And we'll, we'll see a little video later that shows you what we're going to do about that. <coughs> More convenient for the family, 22%, meaning grandma lives in another community, I work in that community, my child's going to go to school in that community. And a better academic program, 13% had that perception. So, um, and again, this, this is a starting point, it's a benchmark for us, and it gives us something to study so we can go deeper and find out how we can better meet the needs of our community. In response to uh, communications, 93% of our parents and of the opt-out parents felt they were very well informed or somewhat well informed. And 73% of our parents said they get most of their information from parent link. We want to up that uh, so that social media is something that our parents are looking to more. And we also noticed through our citizen council a gap for families who are not in the district, you know, uh, residents, senior citizens, in getting information. So we want to target those that particular demographic. And then we have just some agree or disagree statements. SPS is a safe place for students. Our parents, 95% agree. 56 of the opt-out parents agree. SPS offers a quality curriculum. 62% of the opt-out parents, 84% of ours agree. Talk about the district is positive, which we just covered, and the district is headed in the right direction, which we just covered. So, um, based on the survey, we are uh, developing a communication plan that will hit the main points of the survey and what our citizens council share with us. So we want to really focus on uh, our stellar teachers, our academic programs, and our early education. So our first step was to develop a video that talks about our preschool and our kindergarten. <coughs> so Ms. Um, Gardner, if you could show that video. Southfield Public Schools Preschool and Kindergarten Experience. As parents, you have high hopes for your youngster, although you're not always certain what the future holds. But you can be sure Southfield Public Schools Preschool and Kindergarten Experiences will prepare your child to succeed wherever their heart may lead them. That preparation begins with Bussey Center for Early Childhood Development. I chose the Bussey Center for Jonah to attend preschool because it's in my neighborhood and they offer <coughs> an awesome education. Jonah has learned so many things at Bussy. A lot of learning how to interact with other students, conflict resolution, using his words, all the things that he knows, he's learning how to use those things, applying it to his everyday little life. I would tell parents that are 
looking for a preschool to look no further. It's right here, right here, the Bussey Center. Bussey, accredited by the National Association for the Education of the Young Child, is accredited in and employs the internationally renowned high school curriculum. Well, what sets Bussey apart from other centers is that we have um, a stellar program. We use the high school curriculum, which is internationally known. As a result of the Perry Preschool Project, they followed these students for over 40 years. And they found out in that 40 year period that there was less dropout um, for children that were, you know, in high school. They found out it was less incarceration. Those were, those children that participated and went on to college. Our preschool program has children who come from ages three and they stay total before kindergarten. We have full day programs and a half day program. And the four year olds are usually the ones that are here all day. So they get to have breakfast with us. And then we move into our uh, large muscle part of the day, wake them up, get ready for our activities. The small group with the teacher has initiated our planning with them. And then they make their choices to work in their areas, the center areas of the day. So there are the like, house areas, one of the centers in our uh, classroom. We have a block area. The technology is very important, so we have nappies and computer areas for the children, an art area so they can be creative. The table toy area has a lot of manipulatives to work for, with their fine motor. It's very multicultural, and we work in small groups, so there are two teachers that are have degrees. They and just not assistants. You know, they're fully co working together, team planning together, uh, families work together with us, we do home visits with the parents, get to know them at their home. Also parent teacher conferences here at the center. So we're always uh, sending homework papers home weekly. Parents are working with their children and creating a bond with us. This curriculum has a proven track record and is designed to help young minds grasp both simple and complex concepts. Due to the demands, starting this fall, Southfield Public Schools is offering parents the option of a tuition-based preschool program. Parents do not have to be residents of Oakland County to enroll in the tuition-based preschool program. City of Southfield or Lathrop Village residency is required for kindergarten enrollment. Busby offers the following benefits. Nationally proven high school curriculum, caring supportive environment, instruction by teachers with degrees in early childhood, free field trips, free snacks, free parent and family engagement workshops, free vision, hearing, and dental screening. The state of Michigan gives the program a four out of five star rating. By the time your youngster is ready for kindergarten, our committed and dedicated staff, 86% of which hold master's degrees, are ready to help bring learning to life with lessons that incorporate your child's particular learning style. A day in kindergarten is fun um, at Southfield Public Schools. Our students come in in the morning and they're able to build a connection and socialization skills with their peers and they are able to uh, communicate with them in order to build their listening skills as well as their speaking skills. We definitely set high expectations for our kids. Technology is everything at this point. Um, in order to get our kindergartens ready um, to compete in our global society, um, they definitely need um, the technology skills. Um, the visual aids that the technology provides helps our students um, that have difficulty with um, just learning or maybe they're an auditory learner, um, a visual learner, and definitely our tactile learners as well. I have two kids that have been at South of Public Schools, and both of them have amazing experiences at South of Public Schools, especially starting with kindergarten. My oldest, Raylene, has been here since kindergarten. Coming into South of Public Schools was absolutely amazing. She only knew how to write her name, didn't know how to write her last name. She had problems. She also had ADHD, so they helped her write because her handwriting is very sloppy and that's improved starting in kindergarten. My second child, Jaylene, she's six years old. She's amazing. She's my little diva. 
But at the same time, she did not like in the beginning to start sitting down with me and studying. And her teacher, amazing. She absolutely sat down with her, taught her how to sit down with me, taught her ABCDs, one, two, three, taught her how to write her name, first name, last name, and she's actually starting to read right now. When children are actively engaged in their environment and their learning and using materials that are of interest to them, it stimulates the brain. And sometimes what happens is children usually pick things because we're all intrinsically motivated to do what we feel successful with. So children usually pick something that they use or that they feel successful with. So teachers have been taught to meet the child where they are, look at their interests, and then look at content. How can I attach content to interest? Research shows students who begin their academic careers early with Southfield Public Schools perform better on standardized tests. It's no wonder all of our kindergarten programs received high marks on the Michigan School Accountability Scorecard. College begins at busing. If you want your child to be ready to go to college, then they need to be at busing. Find out why you have the best you can get with Southfield Public Schools. Call today or visit. And I have two quick slides to show, um, and then that's it. So our uh, recent Southfield Public News in the News, we had an article on the Free Press with a uh, one of our teachers over at Thompson, Sandra Shackleford. You can look that up. Of course, our athlete signing, um, Michigan School students take the SAT instead of the ACT, and SPS struts his stuff on February 9th, and our partnership with the Michigan Science Center and BASF were all in the news. And I think if you received the message, you saw a revised message this week. And that is a blue my report. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so very much. And Lord, that concludes my report. But I have to say, I know I'm biased. So why would you place your child anywhere else? <laughs> okay. Good evening. My report tonight is contained in the consent agenda. Good evening. Good evening. I'm going to move to the podium. I want to share um, updates with you about our positive behavior support. At the last board meeting, I covered some items, and we're going to keep moving forward, and the best way to do that is to stay focused and keep moving. Okay. Southfield Public Schools is committed to uniform processes in all schools. So several years ago, well two years ago, fall of 2013, the board approved the policy on behavior, um, well for infractions, and that was dress code, attendance, cell phone usage, and skipping and loitering. This year, in moving forward, we developed some procedures to highlight the policy. And then to go a step further, this winter, we looked at the procedures and we made some changes. So what we continue to do is reflect, change, reflect, change. The district and schools will continue to focus on proactive strategies that support appropriate student behavior. So, what we're doing is connected to the strategic plan, which is goal four, supporting buildings and classrooms. We are strategically and purposefully instituting protocols that will support appropriate choices. In your packet, you'll see three pages as an attachment. At your leisure, please look through those. What you'll see is the policy that was instituted and approved by the board. That's page three. 
you will then see the adjustments, page two. And then we developed, recently developed a flow chart. So it's a flow chart at a glance. So that the teachers don't have to always go through the formal matrix, but they can just look to see what the steps are. I want to also thank Almadine, George Chap, and Elise Collier. They are my synergy team. We get together. All I can say is we make magic. <laughs> and, and we're dedicated to change, changing behavior, positivity. We want to go deeper. It was a joy to witness the AP program. On the other side, we have students that need to get there. And sometimes it's about their attitude. So if we can help them understand our rules and procedures, we can make change and begin to really close that achievement gap. Well, that we didn't stop with the matrix. We're about 21st century. So we developed a Google Doc because what we saw was there are some the infractions happen, and there are pieces that the teachers and administrators do <coughs> every day. But there are sometimes there's no record, which means then there's no accountability. And we want teachers, administrators, and parents to be accountable. We also want to be able to stop and look and analyze our data. So the Google Docs, which everyone has access to in the district, they record the infraction and the interventions used. They must contact parents. The matrix highlights staff action and direction. It also highlights administrative action. The newest improvement, and I, and I just said everyone can view the document. Initially we began, you couldn't see what the administrative procedures were or what another teacher was recording. We've recently opened up the documents for all staff members to be able to view total transparency. Next we're going to develop steps to implement strategies to teach expected behavior. We just assume kids know why we have policies and procedures. Sometimes they really don't because they never stop to think about it. So we need to take that responsibility and take opportunities to teach them this is why we do this. This is why we function as a community. Finally, next step. We're going to continue analysis of suspension data and loss of instructional time. If we improve instructional time, we improve learning. We're going to develop multiple opportunities to teach expectations and norms. If we increase consistency, we will change behavior. We're also going to begin hosting focus groups at the high school level to discuss the culture and climate. Any questions? At this time, that concludes my report. Thank you.
later on this evening, but I would like to call your attention. Um, we have for approval tonight, um, Mr. Derek Lopez is our new Associate Superintendent for um, uh, Instructional Services and School Performance. So um, I would like at this time to invite Mr. Lopez to go to the podium and um, introduce himself and just uh, give a few words. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Derek Lopez, and I am just thankful to be joining this family. Um, I'm overwhelmed with what I've seen this evening and for the last three days, um, working alongside such committed men and women to do the work that we do every day. Um, so I'm the sum total of all of the experiences that I've had in my life, and that experience began really when my granddaddy said, "Go and get them books." <laughs> so I'm a country boy by trade, but because of them books, I've gone to some of the best educational institutions in the country, I've seen the world, I've had the opportunity to explore several really, really loving careers, but this is where I live and sit, I'm a teacher, and I will just share with you that my grandmother wasn't able to go to school, she had to work in Farmer, Mississippi. And she told me when I was really young that I wanted to be a teacher. If I had been able to go to school, I would have become a teacher. And I'm just really thankful that I was able to fulfill that dream for her. And I hope and pray that I can honor her name, Marie Henretta Jones, and honor my family by serving the children and families of Southfield with honor and integrity. So I thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Center for Early Childhood Education. One thing I will highlight where it says the Child Adult Care Food Program, um, this will take about 25 seconds away from my board matters at the end of the meeting, just to point out that this past uh, conference you and I attended, Mr. Poole, um, they talked about how the uh, Food and Drug Administration and the, the Agricultural Department, how they they make decisions that affect us right here on the ground level. And it's not always uh, something they fund, and it's not always something they, it seems, even ask our input. Well, they do. And it's usually buried, like they always say, burying the lead. But um, they do have these types of communications. So I want to do a better job of gleaning those out and then making sure that we all have a chance to offer comments with these addresses and mail things and say, hey, this might present a hardship for the program, or this may not. So that's just a little tidbit there. Um, getting to the actual PowerPoint report. So as you know, I was absent last month and did not have a chance to do the January report. Um, I was able to fuse where need be to save time. And so with that, Ms. Gardner, I'm sure you got me all queued up. So our enrollment, and I fixed this slide 17 different times, <laughs> and saved, I don't know, but I will say that in January, um, there were 178 Head Start enrollees, 64 GSRP, uh, 17 dropped, and 107, 107 on the wait list. For the month of February, it is 179 for Head Start, GSRP 69 drops of 25, and wait list of 105. If we look at our enrollment information, Ms. Hill was, has been sharing with us that the new law requiring children to be five by October 1st is in motion, and we have several, several children that cannot attend our full day Head Start or GSRP blended classroom. The wait list of 92 children are all three-year-olds or do not meet the state cutoff of um, October 1st. Why is this important? Um, because we're stewards of the, of the taxpayer's dollar that if we were to allow a child in who was not, who did not meet that criteria, we would not be able to claim the, the school aid for that particular student. So that's rubber meets the road. For average daily attendance, the COPA data management system reported for the month of December, it was reported that in, in January, it was reported about the month of December being 51%. And then in February, the report showed that January's numbers were 74.57 and you can see some of the reasons why um, we've had some access. But I think the, the thing that Ms. Hill wants to really drive home is that whether your kid has an illness, a family matter, a doctor visit, please call in. The Office of Head Start is really serious about documenting absences and things like that. So there's no reason for you to feel you would get in trouble as a parent or a guardian, but it's really important to keep our program solid. <coughs> we have 19 children who receive services, and uh, regarding meal served for the month of January, 1,827 breakfast, 2,224 lunch, 1,882 snacks. You see the uh, report for February, 2,220 breakfast, lunch, 2,727, and snacks, 2,298. Following that, uh, many of you are aware that the self-assessment is underway. That data will be compiled and provided um, to the Head Start with the application. And the community needs assessment is complete. Unemployment, based on that community needs assessment, it was found that the unemployment rate in Southfield is down. Or, yeah, I'm going to imagine she's talking about Southfield, not the state entirely. However, the, the governor did mention unemployment rate was down statewide, um, but I'm not sure what area of the state he's focused on. Um, and then for 2015, an additional $65 million has been allocated for GSRP, and that allowed us to fill five slots, additional slots. Mm -hmm. And then it's also been received in the community needs assessment that families at 300% of the poverty level will now qualify. A family of four can make up to approximately 78000 and qualify for free preschool services. So that's something um, important in here, too. <coughs> Um, the Office of Head Start has had some changes in how we are to do our application for refunding. 
Um, that conference call with Ms. Chavez and Ms. Hill took place, and she's preparing and giving guidance for that. Um, the in-kind numbers will be adjusted during the month of March, and accurate information will be provided for Policy Council, Governing Board, and parents. The GSRP and Head Start in-kind hours have to be reported separately. March 25th is the internal review team visit to Bussy, and cultural day is February 26th, 2015. The financial data, and we have that uh, breakdown as well for members and community have access to that at Bussy. Um, our grant award, as you know, is one million six hundred fifty thousand three hundred sixty-eight dollars. And uh, <coughs> of that, you see the breakdown, program operations, training and technical assistance, and the local match. And uh, that next slide points out the federal grant. And I wanted to highlight this for the community that um, that would include salaries, fringe benefits, training and technical, purchase services, etc. And that comes to one point two million dollars. And we have uh, the balance remaining of 746000 or about 56.6% of that remaining. And you, you also see noted in the orange arrow on your spreadsheet there that that's a benchmark where generally we could be at 52.63. So we're, at, we're really in a good, a good place there federally. Locally, you can see some of the criteria there of what qualifies as local. Um, you see the volunteers has an asterisk that has to do with that re, uh, redoing of those numbers, and she'll provide that next month. And then I wanted to highlight that the governing board, if you look at your spreadsheet, has no work. They basically didn't budget that we would do things. And I mean, of course, we would, but I'm just saying <coughs> that they didn't assume it. And so it's very nice that from all of our hard work at the Bussy Center, we have earned $7,548 towards the program. Um, among other things, including parent services, and so we're really doing great there, and let's keep it up. Um, and so that's a balance remaining of 34 um, percent. Ms. Katz would be very proud to see that we've got this listed here uh, to just notify of what the budget was, <coughs> what we spent to date, the balance remaining of $860,000, and the percent remaining of 52.1 percent. Uh, my last slide here are just notes that Kat, Kate Stankovich provided for us, which was that there were no charge payments in January 2015. The open purchase orders are not included in this, and I just want to say to Catherine Dankovich, and you can relay the message that um, she's just really giving us enough, more than enough information so that we really feel confident that things are where they're going, and so she's also indicated that purchase orders were not included those, that, those numbers there, and then the in-kind contributions, I spoke about that already, and the line item budget report also provided as well as transaction detail for non-wage or benefit accounts as they were reported. So all those things she'll update <coughs> us on in the months to come. Um, and finally, just two last things. I asked two of my colleagues to highlight just a couple of things that, especially since we get paid for these reports. Let's, let's Length them out as much as possible <laughs> here. But um, <laughs> Trustee Lewis and Trustee Smith agreed to just highlight a couple of things that were provided to the parents. And you can read the, he the heading because I didn't drop them down. In addition to the uh, report that was given, it's imperative that I note that, it's, that it is uh, important that a bridge uh, is built between the home and the school. And very briefly, I want to talk about three things that parents can do in order to build that bridge. Building a bridge is very important because uh, when I was in K-12 education, I was fortunate enough to have a father that was an educator, <coughs> and I was able to be an eyewitness of my parents sitting down with me as a teacher being involved in my education. So I would like to share with the community, with the parents of the community, three things that they can do to increase student achievement. <coughs> Number one, read every day. Share your love of books with your child. Research shows there are, there are benefits from reading to your child for 30 minutes a day. It does not have to be done all at once. 
second, talk and listen. When you talk and listen with your child, he or she builds language and learns me to see it. Thirdly, help your child see herself, himself, as a capable person. Help build self-esteem by pointing out all the things your child does right. Make an effort to look for the good in your child. Help your child see how wonderful she or he is. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. And in addition, um, I would like to add, <coughs> this is another resource that was provided, is how I can help my child become a reader. Um, and this one, I highlight it because it spoke to me and something that I did with my daughter. Um, make up stories about your child's daily activities. Use your child as a character in the story. Children love to hear about themselves and their own adventures. They can be real or make-believe. Have the child add details to the story. And I can remember my daughter just loving that. She always wanted to hear the story about Princess Anna. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then another uh, note is notice your child's skills at reading signs and his or her surroundings, labels, milk cartons, pictures on cereal boxes, Stop signs, um, the stop sign is usually the first thing that children learn to read, um, stop. And uh, my daughter's favorite was Kroger. She would always <laughs> tell us, you know, Mom, we're at Kroger, you know, because she would read the sign. So those are definitely real time, um, very relative ways to help uh, children become readers. <laughs> Yes. Trustee Smith? Yes. Trustee Rask? 
participation. Uh, the board recently adopted an amendment policy on public participation. Only those persons with concerns related to school matters may participate during the public participation portion of a meeting. Comments are limited to three minutes. The board will listen to comments but may not respond during the meeting. Comments may be referred to an administrator or superintendent for follow-up. As a matter of fairness, speakers with complaints against individuals are asked not to mention persons by name. Complaints concerning employees should be brought to the attention of school principals or other administrators before coming to the board, and your cooperation is appreciated. Do we have any cards? Beautiful. I will now move directly into the board matters, and I'm going to switch it up a little bit. We always start from the end. I'm going to start from here tonight. <laughs> that, 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 that video was just, I was almost in tears, I dare to dream. I mean, I honestly was. Well, since it did, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. But I'd like to read, since we don't have a proclamation, the board here, I'd like to read the proclamation from our President of the United States. And this proclamation is about, is for National American, African American History Month. Some of us know it's Black History For generations, the story of American progress has been shaped by the inextinguishable belief that change is always possible and a brighter future lies ahead. With tremendous strength and abiding resolve, our ancestors, some of whom were brought to this land in chains, have woven their resilient dignity into the fabric of our nation and taught us that we are not trapped by the mistakes of history. It was with these truths that found expression as foot soldiers and freedom riders set in and stood up, marched, and agitated for justice and equality. This audacious movement gave birth to a new era of civil and voting rights, and slowly we renewed our commitment to an ideal at the heart of our founding. No matter who you are, what you look like, how modest your beginnings, or your circumstances of your birth, you deserve every opportunity to achieve your God-given potential. He stated, as we mark the National African American History Month, we celebrate giants of the Civil Rights Movement and countless other men and women whose names are etched in the hearts of their loved ones and the cornerstones of the country. They help the country that they help to change. We pause to reflect on our progress and our history not only to remember, but also to acknowledge our unfinished work. We reject the false notions that our challenges lie only in the past, and we recommit to advancing what has been left undone. Brave Americans did not struggle and sacrifice to secure fundamental rights for themselves and others, only to see those rights denied to their children and grandchildren. Our nation is still wracked with division and poverty. Too many children live in crumbling neighborhoods, cycling through substandard schools, and being affected by daily violence in their communities. And Americans of all races have seen their wages and income stagnate while inequality continues to hold back hardworking families and entire communities. But the trajectory of our history gives us hope. Today, we stand on the shoulders of courageous individuals who endured the thumps of billy clubs, the blast of fire hoses and the pain of watching dreams be deferred and denied. We honor them by investing in those around us and doing all we can to ensure every American can reach their full potential. Our country is at its best when everyone is treated fairly and has a chance to build a future they seek for themselves and their families. This means providing an opportunity for every person in America to access a world-class education, safe, and affordable housing, and <coughs> job training that will prepare them for the careers of tomorrow. Like the countless quiet heroes who worked and bled far from the public eye, we know that with enough empathy and preservation, perseverance, excuse me, people who live in our country can change it. I'll say that again. People, we do this every day. People who live in our country can change it. Together, we can help our nation live up to its immense promise. This month, 
Let us continue that in unending journey toward a more just, a more equal, and a more perfect union. He then signed, there, now, therefore, I, Barack Obama, President of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution and law of the United States, do hereby proclaim February 2015 as National African American History Month. And I call upon public officials, educators, librarians, and all people of the United States to observe this month with appropriate programs, ceremonies, and activities. The district will be doing that across this district. I have a few that I'm aware of at this point. On Thursday, February 12th, McIntyre Elementary from 6 to 8.30 will have a program. On Thursday, February 26th, Thompson K-8 will have its program at 1.30, and Adler will have their program at 7 to 8 p.m. And then on Friday, February 27th, Stevenson Elementary will have their program starting at 9.30 a.m. Please check with your <coughs> local school, because uh, this may not be an all-inclusive list, to find out what programs will take place. And again, we thank you for all that you do. <coughs> thank you. I didn't know we had a new name. So, thank you. National <laughs> African American History Month. <laughs> It'll, it'll be acting soon. Um, just a few things I feel that, as my counterpart said, we do a lot of things during the month, and sometimes it may seem uh, that we don't dig in, but we do dig in. And I just wanted to highlight January in review. Um, for the purpose of the community, and for us to reflect on what we've all had to do this, this past month. And so, first I'd like to say that um, earlier this month, we had a robust retreat uh, one of the things that I wanted to highlight was Sustainable Southfield. Um, I went on their website yesterday, and it's up and running, but it's sustainablesouthfield.mindmixer.com. There are some postcards out in the hall for those of you who are here in the building and um, probably all over Southfield. But oftentimes people don't feel like they have buy-in, and I think that's a wonderful way for all of us, elected and unelected, to have some good buy-in. So that was my takeaway from that. Shortly thereafter, I attended an Oakland County School Board Association meeting where we get a lot of robust legislative information. Um, I know Trustee Robinson, Trustee Katz, many other trustees attended over the over the months and over the years, and I volunteer along with anyone else to start attending those meetings again so we can start to really um, get with our legislators in Lansing at, and in Washington, D.C. Thirdly, uh, for Member Poole, and I know he'll have some remarks, but we attended the Advocacy Institute. I took a, a number of things away, but there are three things that the community has to hear, from me at least, that um, we need the federal government to fully fund IDEA, which is how we support our students with individualized instruction or educational plans. Um, services we render, eyes, physical therapy, OT, all of those various things are very costly. And the federal government mandates that we offer these things with IDEA, but they've never, and I didn't know this, so, but they've never fully funded it. So it's like your mom says, well, the store buy me a $5 this, and she gives you two seventy nine, dollars And she's like, make it work. <laughs> so that's very similar. Um, the, the second thing that they beat into us was we need our federal government to reauthorize ESEA. Um, I know Mr. Lopez is nodding, we're all nodding, but um, it, it has a, a nickname of NCLB or No Child, Child Left Behind, but that's a stigma, you know, we'll leave that, but ESEA. So if you're interested, please write or call your legislators in Washington, D.C. Um, and reiterate that we need that reauthorized and we need it badly because without it, uh, school districts would suffer. And then lastly was people to stand up for public education. We're all to stand up um, because it's too much sitting down, you know. Um, they told us that oftentimes the only lobbyists they hear from are from charters. Um, so we, we need to be louder. We're not loud enough, so let's get louder. And then um, finally and lastly was just simply our school advanced training, which is one of the, the things that we do as board members is to evaluate our superintendent. And so we don't take that responsibility lightly at all, and we don't want to continue to partic participate in a process that's just arbitrary, which is like a big folder of data, data that the superintendent has done over the year. This is a well-rounded, um, fact-based, research-based process that um, I'm very proud to be a part of.
part of. And um, like the board president said, we don't just talk the talk. We walk it. So we, we evaluate each other as board members, our superintendent, principals, and it goes all the way down. So we just, um, we do a lot. And my new husband says, I don't see you much uh, for this highly paid position we, we hold here. And so I just want the community to know we spend a lot of hours off camera for the, for the good of this district to be solid and strong. So, that's it. Things that I was going to mention, Dr. Wood has already really covered, so <laughs> I won't uh, expound on it. But I did, I had an opportunity to attend the National College Board. Learned a lot from that, um, that conference, and uh, I'm sure we will be hearing more from her later on that. And also, I was going to mention uh, about the um, uh, Founders Day, BT Founders Day that we attended last week. That was uh, where we honor our parents and our staff, and it was uh, a great event. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to update the community on our advocacy institute that we attended in Washington, D.C. And it was, um, it, was, it, was, it was very rich. We had opportunity to um, spend time with our legislatures. Uh, we had time to spend with uh, our colleagues uh, from around the country. And we spent our first uh, afternoon, uh, Trustee Smith and I, Charles, uh, we rode in together, and that's about all the time we spent together because we wanted to divide and conquer. Mm -hmm. It was just too much for us to be shadowing each other. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what I did during that conference, and I, I did run into Trustee Charles as well. Uh, Saturday, we, we pretty much got ready for the next day. started right at 8 o'clock, and that was when we sat down and we decided, you know, what were we going to take to the hill? What was our strategy? What, what did we want? And pretty much there were the three things. One, reauthorization of Elementary Secondary Education Act. Two, we wanted them to just properly fund individuals with disabilities education act. They've never funded. Never funded. Um, so we wanted them to just give us what they promised. And thirdly, I took a liberty and with uh, uh, Senator Stavanon in her office to let them know that Southfield's being um, um, run over by charter schools. And I felt that we needed some type of zoning uh, here in the state of Michigan at least, because that's her area, that if you look at Oakland County, and at that time, I think the last time we looked at the numbers, it was about 32 charters operating in, in the county. Over half of them were operating in the mm -hmm. That's unfair. Mm -hmm. And other districts from around the country are facing the same thing. It's diluting our, 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 our tax base. So um, that was sad. That was Sunday. Started at 8 o'clock. And if we're getting paid for this, somebody tell me something. I'm not seeing any money. <laughs> 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 we went till um, uh, 4 or 5 o'clock. Then we had caucuses after that. Um, so Monday we got up and we had a congressional breakfast with the um, Honorable John Klein, Republican from Minnesota. And Mr. Klein is the Chairman for Education and Workforce Committee. We also heard from Suzanne Bonamici, who's a Democrat from Oregon. And she's the co-chair for the Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts, Design, Math, and that's STEAM. There was a lot of people at, at this congressional lunch. So we, we didn't have a chance really to get to meet and talk one-on-one -on -one with those um, members of, of, of the House and of the Congress. The next day was the Day on the Hill, Tuesday. And that's where we actually had a chance. Um, we had uh, Senator Peters and Senator Savannah come to the congressional breakfast for, for Michigan. I've got pictures for that as well. Um, that breakfast, they talked about what we wanted them to talk about. The authorization of the ESEA. And Senator Stavanaugh is on the same page with us because she came on the same page. And she feels the same way that we do, that individuals with disabilities have not been properly funded. 
and we heard from her at breakfast. Later on that morning, we actually got together with each senator in their office to talk one-on-one -on -one about our issues and wanted them to take some action on some of that. We met with um, Gary Peters. Oh, I, I got to say this, too. Gary Peters is a freshman senator. Like he's been there for the Congress. So he kind of has an idea of how it goes. But first-year congressman and first-year senator, off the face is Gary. So Mr. Peters was in, a, was in a trailer, but we met with Mr. Peters. And there was some confusion over where we were supposed to meet with Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence. Okay, now, I had already scheduled a photo op with Senator Peters, and I guess Ms. Charles called David to let him know that the meeting had been changed. So, with her being our Congresswoman, our new Congresswoman, I said, I'm going. Now, excuse me, Senator Peters, but that's my Congresswoman, so we all have to remember that. Some of the people weren't even in her district, but they just wanted to be <laughs> Congresswoman and friend of Lawrence. We got up and we left. Well, we got there, and it was on the fifth floor, and we had to take an elevator to the fourth floor, walk over to another elevator that was <laughs> up the one floor to get to her office. And um, she wasn't able to join us. But she did send her special assistant, Marty Williams. And what's so significant about Marty Williams is Marty Williams is a former South Dole Strip assistant coach, the mm -hmm. coach. And um, that kind of meant, meant something to him. We doubled back and we met with um, Sen Senator Debbie Stadenoff, and that's where I encountered a conversation with uh, another board who was deaf. Yeah, Absolutely high on Mr. Lopez. Absolutely. Glowing response. We met with uh, Senator Sabinoff, and um, we, we, we shared with her our thoughts. Not only the two or three that we wanted to push on a national level, but we wanted her to address um, our concerns here in South Carolina. That was pretty much our. Uh, uh, the, the, the gist of our institute. Um, I got back to uh, a car with a foot of snow on that Wednesday morning and had it to call to have someone dig me out so I could get to the office, but I think I got to the office by 1 30. So, um, that was the trip. Uh, Southfield was definitely well represented. Uh, Southfield definitely was one of those districts that they paid close attention, attention to. It was a district that I told uh, Senator Savino that we're a high-performing district. And I went down the list of things that we accomplished over the years. So with that, I just want to leave you with, um, uh, I heard about uh, the coach and his um, I'd like to take a, uh, a moment of silence for Coach Keith. Stephen, just a, uh, just for a second. A word of a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Um, we've gone from Black History Week to Black History Month. For president, it's National <laughs> National American History Month. African American History Month. That's right. Okay. <coughs> well, the school I came from every day is, is Black History Day. Right. Right. Uh, but since we got to limit it to just the month, I, I just want to real briefly remember uh, the creativity of the Harlem Renaissance. And I've spent a lot of time in New York lately. And I think there's a Harlem rebirth. 
Remember the pride of Jesse Owens in the 1936 elections. Honor Marion Anderson and the concert she had at the Lincoln Memorial. Respect the Tuskegee Airmen. I know one of the sons of the Tuskegee Airmen. And there's still one still alive. Yes. Graduated from Chelsea High School. Remember the fairness of the board versus Brown versus Board of Education, 1954. The commitment of the Montgomery bus boycott. The Little Rock Nine, Central High School, Arkansas. Daisy Bates was on it. Legendary school boards when we see them nationally. Remember the sit-ins. SNCC, Freedom Fire, John Lewis, and our own Viola Lewis, who died shuttling um, participants of that Selma march back and forth from the airport. <coughs> She's buried right here in South. Remember the optimism of the march of 1963 and the hope that my Angela gave us in her poem at the Bill Clinton inauguration of 1993. When I think of Black History Month, I think of educators. I really do. I think it was started by educators. Curtis G. Woods, Sigma, uh, later became an Omega. But if you really think about life and the people that you truly remember outside of your family, it's educators. Every time I'm with classmates, whether it's high school or college, after we exchanged pleasantries and talked about how things are going, we start talking about you. How is principal so and so? Has anyone seen teacher Miller? Especially the coaches. That's why I wanted to take a moment of silence mm -hmm. for the coach. Um, when I heard that, I instantly thought about the coach that we had, and he was he was a test. Um, they actually help motivate and change your lives. So, uh, when I think of Black History Month, I think of the teachers that I've had. But that is what's lasting for me. I think for most of Thank you. Thank you for those comments. Trustee Lewis. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, last week I attended the Founders Day event, and I would just like to say that I enjoyed my time that I spent with uh, teachers, administrators, parents, and other good people in the community. Thank you, Dr. Joyce. Yes, I'd just like to, uh, good evening. I'd just like to uh, uh, highlight a couple of past uh, events that we had here. Uh, the first one was the uh, coffee and conversation with the superintendent. Uh, that was an awesome event. We had great participation. I would urge everyone, when another one comes up, to please join us because uh, uh, um, Trustee Lewis and I were there, and uh, there's some great questions, and Dr. Wood really did a great job at answering those questions, and, and uh, she is just so great at how she handles how she handles the crowd. And the um, second one is, is the event we had yesterday, uh, yesterday evening at uh, Michigan First Credit Union. That was a specialized uh, uh, school night, and it, it was a great event. Uh, uh, it, it was a crowd. It didn't start out as a crowd, but by by God, by halfway through, we, we had it was packed. And um, uh, Mrs. Dean did an awesome job of hosting that, and uh, Mrs. Lysy and uh, Ali uh, Car Carver. And it, it was so, it was so great because everybody was so enthused, and I got a chance to talk to a lot of parents afterwards. And I found out that a lot of parents there were only there just to get more information, which really means that that was a great event. Mm -hmm. We had parents there was looking for uh, uh, schools to, to send their children or, or, or early sco uh, schools for the busing, but a lot of them were there to get more information. And so that means something when, when, when we have an event and 
people are looking for more information about Southfield Public Schools. Yeah. Thank you, Trustee Joyce. Trustee Smith. Thank you. Um, good evening. Um, I echo the remarks about Black History Month, now known as uh, National African American <laughs> Month, <laughs> in regards to uh, there being several programs that are going to take place across the district. And so I encourage you all to um, find a program and attend. Uh, we definitely want to show our students that we support their efforts and that we support uh, the celebration of this month and uh, of our history, as well as we are all preparing for mid-winter break and we're filling our calendars. I encourage uh, parents to consider the Charles H. Wright Museum. I've already been on their website. They have a host of free uh, children's programs, uh, music, uh, just a variety of ways to engage reading, um, some plays. So. I think that will definitely be a delight, uh, a way to fill up that time next week. Also, um, I want to highlight the Celebrity Readers Program. This is a program in the district that I am particularly excited to participate in. Uh, and last month, I had the privilege to enjoy yet another Friday afternoon hanging out with my kindergarten friends. Um, I joke that I spend Monday through uh, Thursday, uh, some some weeks with a bunch of three and four year olds, and then I spend my off day in the kindergarten class. So, and I have a six year old at home, so I can't get away from the itty bitty. Um, <laughs> but I was over at Make Off there, and we had such a fun time. We read uh, the Very Hungry Caterpillar, and they were all so excited to share with me about everything that they had been learning about Dr. Martin Luther King. Uh, and a few of them were even, you know, thrilled to share how they had seen me at the Southfield um, MLK Task Force event. So that was really exciting. Um, we had a great time. We, were, we gathered around the carpet. We took some pictures. Uh, and it was just so exciting to hear how excited they were um, about learning and uh, about reading and about books. Uh, and so I just encourage you all to take a moment, go to the district's website, and find out how you can sign up to become a, a celebrity reader. Uh, it takes about 10 minutes. Uh, next month is the National Reading Month, so uh, I know that they definitely need some volunteers. Uh, it, it only literally only takes a couple minutes to sign up, and it takes about two to three hours out of, uh, out of your time to volunteer. And then lastly, and it was mentioned earlier, in one of the student reports, today was Southfield High School's National Honor Society induction. Uh, and it was such a treat to have been invited and to attend. Uh, and it was wonderful to see all of the 35 new members that they're gaining. Um, and it was just very refreshing to hear their dreams and aspirations. And so I want to shout them out because it was mentioned at that uh, event how there was 